Hey friends, tonight we are hanging out at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I wanted to come out and give you guys a little bit of a park update, see if there's anything new going on, and then we also have dining reservations at the Hollywood Brown Derby, and I feel like I haven't eaten there in such a long time. So we're gonna ride some rides, eat some food, and just have a beautiful Hollywood Studios kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. Today over in Disneyland they actually opened Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and I thought it would be cool if we could try to ride it here in Walt Disney World even though I kind of wish I was in Disneyland so we're gonna have to see what the wait time is like. The last couple times I've come to Hollywood Studios, it's always so busy here and the wait times are so long. Tower of Terror is always over 100 minutes. Same thing with Slinky Dog Dash and Rise of the Resistance. But I started to notice as it gets later in the evening, some of those wait times aren't really accurate. So we're going to see if that's the case tonight and hopefully we get to ride some rides. I'm always so used to seeing Donald Duck up here, but look at this, Geppetto is actually up there today. <laughs> hey, Geppetto. I like your mustache. <laughs> That was kind of fun seeing Geppetto just hanging out, waving at people, playing with his mustache. I always love when you see surprise characters like that because like you wouldn't expect for them to be there, you know? Like I mentioned earlier, we have dining reservations at the Hollywood Brown Derby and I'm excited. I haven't eaten here in a while and I've been craving the grapefruit cake and maybe even the uh, grapefruit drink that's really good here. And I also want to try to experiment with the menu and try something I've never had before. Like I mentioned, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway opened in Disneyland and that's celebrating the 100th anniversary of Walt Disney Studios and they also released a bunch of merchandise so I'm really hoping that I can get my hands on some of that merchandise here today. I don't know if they're selling it in the parks or if it's just on Shop Disney but I saw some and I am in love. It looks like they do have some of the special 100th anniversary items, a lot from Walt Disney Studios. Look at this spirit jersey right here. Oh, I'm in love with all of this. Whole entire line is so much better than the 50th anniversary items. Here's the ears. They have a better pair of ears and also a lot of other cool stuff. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, I'm in love. I really do love this line so much. Take a look at this Walt Disney Studios hoodie right here. I'm obsessed with this. This looks so cool. And then the hat. Look at this. I am definitely getting this hat. I actually might wear it right now. That is so perfect. All of this stuff is amazing. It's gonna sell out, I feel like. It's gonna sell out so fast. I am beyond happy about getting this hat. I love it so much. I'm actually, I have my other hat like on my pants, like through my belt loop, but I had to switch out because I think this is just, it's such a great hat. Look at this. Oh, oh, I love it. Oh, I'm bald. Even though I switched out my hats, I still want to ask, can anybody guess what movie this hat is based off of? It's really cool. It's a comedy movie and it's kind of a classic. And I, I would say definitely focus on the colors because that's what will give it away. Let me know in the comments, name the movie, but this is really cool. It's made by Roosevelt's too. If you guys ask if I'm one of those people that get super excited when they buy something new and they immediately want to wear it, now you know. <laughs> I mean, I have to. I just gotta. Here is a look at the wait times at the moment. Tower of Terror is at a 145 minute wait. That's crazy. Rock and Roller Coaster 70 minutes, Slinky Dog Dash 125 minutes, and I think uh, Mickey and Minnie's is 80 minutes long. So we're definitely not gonna ride any rides right now. We're gonna wait a little bit later and see if they go down a little bit and then see if it's uh, accurate or not. Now I think we're going to head on over to the Brown Derby. It's time for our reservation and I'm a little bit hungry too, but I have to find something I want. So we have to look at the menu. I wish I was able to actually go to the original Hollywood Brown Derby. I bet you that's got to be a nice real treat. I did get to go to the uh, Tam O'Shanter though when I went out to uh, Hollywood last time and that was actually really good. 
here is a look at the menu at the Hollywood Brown Derby. The, uh, for appetizers, they have a roasted squash and apple soup, crab louis. They also have an escargot casino, which I don't think I'm going to be trying the escargot. And then for entrees, they have the 50th anniversary filet. Now, this I've actually had before, and it's served like Walt Disney would like it. And it comes with a little uh, beef hash on there. They also have salmon, uh, chicken. They have the famous Cobb salad, which everyone loves that Cobb salad. It's like their signature dish. And then they had the grilled pork, uh, braised short rib, and then duck. So lots of other good stuff. And then for enhancements, they have spoon bread, lavender, and honey butter. I'm so excited. We're definitely gonna try a, a lot of things. A little bit of everything, you know? The original Brown Derby opened up in the 1920s and it was like the spot to be for actors and actresses in Hollywood. And usually there's tons of caricatures all over the walls. And what I was told was the ones with the gold frames in here are the original ones from one of the original Hollywood Brown Derbies. If that's true, that's really interesting, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll try to fact check that for you though. Here is the restaurant itself. The one thing I like a lot are these cool brown derby lights right here. Look at these hats. That's very cool. And these are the gold frame ones I was talking about that I heard were originals. And these are just like little decorations that they have. But they're all over the restaurant. And it's really cool in here. They even have a nice little map of Hollywood Boulevard over here. The whole restaurant is just iconic looking. I do like it a lot. And we're sitting in a special little area that everyone says it's the best place to eat when you come here. I think it's called the Bamboo Room. Some other fun facts about the Brown Derby. The Shirley Temple drink was actually invented at the original Brown Derby for, of course, Shirley Temple. Like I mentioned before, all the stars and starlets always wanted to come to the Brown Derby and Shirley Temple used to go all the time. So she wanted a drink of her own. So Robert Cobb, the person that uh, actually owned the Brown Derby, created the Shirley Temple. And he also created the very first Cobb salad. That's why his name was Robert Cobb and uh, now it's a staple here and they're all around the world. Cobb salads are everywhere. Same thing with Shirley Temple. So it's pretty iconic. And here is the bamboo room. You guys can request to sit in here, but there's not many tables and it actually gives you a little history about the bamboo room. It originally opened up in February, uh, February 6, 1936. And uh, it was because the South Sea's influence was popular in Hollywood at that time. So restaurants and nightclubs throughout the 1920s and 30s had like this uh, bamboo styled room, little tropical theme. And I like it in here, it looks quiet, a little bit nicer. But there's only like literally four tables in here. And we got one of them. Very fancy. Like I said before, I ended up getting the filet, I think, last time I was here. And it was delicious. It was really good. It was a nice little steak with the, the potato hash. And then it had an egg on top, the way that Walt used to like to eat his steak. But this time, I'm thinking about the pork, the grilled pork, because it comes with Brussels sprouts. And it also comes with a red-eye gravy. And I'm all about the Brussels sprouts. I do love it. Also, sweet potatoes. I feel like maybe I should get myself a nice old-fashioned drink and uh, the best way to go is probably with an old-fashioned. Here is my old-fashioned and it's just Knob Creek with some cherries and bitters. Just a simple old-fashioned and then also some bread service. What's in that bread basket? Ooh, look at those. Look at those little buns. Look at that. <laughs> you want to <laughs> oh, it's special bun too. Oh, <laughs> smack those little buns. <laughs> and what kind of butter is this too? Sea salt on there. Oh, fancy. Yeah. Buns. <laughs> <laughs> Something about sitting in the Hollywood Brown Derby. Got myself a nice little old fashioned. Feel pretty fancy. I'm wearing Walt Disney Studios hat right now. I'm liking this. Take me back. Take me back to the 20s. I, I would have loved it. The 20s and 30s in Hollywood, amazing. Even though the atmosphere is calling for an old fashioned, 
I am a little upset that there's not just a single cube in there. It's just a bunch of ice chips. I don't know. I like my single cubes. But now we have to check out these dinner rolls. And they're very soft. Very, very nice. Very hot. I think I had stuff in my beard the whole time. Oh well. Anywho, here is the uh, dinner roll. And we also ordered spoon bread. And I decided on getting the grilled pork. Mainly because it's a like season, uh, seasonal offering. And I don't want to miss out on it. Especially with the Brussels sprouts. I mean, I'm very excited for it. And uh, the bread is so good though. All right, the food has arrived. Kristen, what did you get? I got the Cobb salad, sub blue cheese for Parmesan. Oh. And I got a side, the tiniest side of shrimp mac and cheese I ever did see. Oh, I'm excited to see where that ranks. What kind of mac and cheese is it? Gouda. Shrimp? Smoked Gouda with shrimp. Oh, very good. And what did you get? I got the Cobb salad as well. It's really good. Yeah? Looks yeah, really good. Finely chopped. Oh, yes, yes. I like it. And then we got the school bread here. Let me see if I can focus in on it. There it is. School bread. No. Spoon <laughs> bread. I kept on calling it it's spoon bread. Like spoon man. Grades K through 12. <laughs> <laughs> School bread. <laughs> and then here is the grilled pork. Look at this. The grilled pork I'm excited for. It's like a nice little pork chop and we got some sweet potato and I think this is a pumpkin puree. Very cool. So we're going to dive in. I asked them why it's called spoon bread, not school bread, and it's because you need to use a spoon to actually eat it. If you use a fork, it kind of just falls apart. It's kind of like a cornbread, but um, it's not like the same like texture itself, and it's got lavender and honey in it. Gonna go on in here on the spoon bread. Oh, it is. It's like a bread pudding almost. Definitely needs a spoon. I'm interested. Did I have this before? I feel like I've never had it before. I, I honestly can't remember if I've ever had the spoon bread before, but now I'm kind of, I'm, I'm excited, a little nervous, don't know what to expect. I mean, I like lavender. I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, it's like butter overload to me. Very buttery. Very wet. <laughs> it's, it's, it's unique. Yeah, it's like a souffle. That's it. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, grab a spoon. Get on in there. Spoon bread. No, too much butter. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? It tastes like the third grade. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, right? It's got this weird texture to it. No, it's like it's not even the texture. I think it's like under it tastes uncooked. And like there are heaps and heaps of butter in it. Yeah, lots of butter. Well, you guys took it better than I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like an immediate no. Yeah, I love cornbread. I know, you do love cornbread. I love cornbread too. But I guess I don't like uh, spoon bread. <laughs> All right, it's time to cut on into the grilled pork now. And I like how they've got a little grill marks on there. Bone in. Got to go bone in. Bone in or go home. There we go. Look at that. I'm excited. I don't know if I should try the pork on its own first and then try all of the puree here or if I should just get a little bit of everything in one bite. I think we're just going to do the pork on its own first. So just the grilled pork. Very good. I'm a little confused because I thought I was getting Brussels sprouts, but it looks like I just got chopped up Brussels sprouts. Yeah, shaved Brussels sprouts. But the pork chop on its own is just good the way it is. So I think I'm gonna try it with some of the sauce now. Grab a little sweet potato, plop that on there. There we go. Some of the shaved Brussels sprouts, put those on there. There you go, kind of looks like coleslaw. Excellent. That's an all-in-one bite right there, folks. We'll see what it's like. A little bit of everything in one bite. Mm. 
mushroom gun. The only thing I don't like, I feel like I don't get any sides. Like this is just a bunch of shredded Brussels sprouts, which I've never had before. Sometimes you gotta put the fork and knife down and just go straight with the bone. That's how you do it. Now it's time we move along to dessert. And they have a couple of cool things on the menu, but the original dessert is the grapefruit cake. Look at that. Comes with a vanilla sponge cake, grapefruit syrup, and cream cheese icing. I'm excited, I do like this. It's got a unique texture to it, but I feel like maybe I should have tried the creme brulee. Citrus and cherry spice compo. I do love me some creme brulee. Here it is, the grapefruit cake. Look at it, it looks so fancy and everything is edible on here. It's basically a, van a vanilla sponge cake with grapefruit and also cream cheese icing. It all looks so good. I don't wanna, I don't wanna cut into it, look at me. I'm like going like this. Ba -da -da. Yeah. Spin that. <laughs> like I said, this is a very unique taste. But we're gonna cut right down the center there. Look at that. Falls right apart. Very delicate. I like it a lot. This was also invented at the Brown Derby. So now you can say grapefruit cakes, Cobb salads, and Shirley Temples. I lost a piece of it. Grapefruit cake down. Did you see it? Just rolled down my shirt. All right. Oh, it might be in my pocket. That's good cake. It's got like this tartness to it. Kind of just like kicks you at the end. I like it a lot. Everybody else? No? I don't like that. Not a grapefruit cake fan? I've had it a couple times now, and I don't know why I try it every time because I, I'm just not a fan of grapefruit. I am such a picky person. I don't like grapefruit either. I'm shocked you like it. I know, I, it I do. Like a bitter medicine on top of a delicious pound cake. That's what I like about it. I like how it's sweet, and then it hits you with this like tart bitterness. I love it. Pow, right in the kisser. <laughs> As you can see, they have tons of the pictures here, but as I mentioned before, only the gold ones are original from the Brown Derby itself. And you can see a couple of them over here. Look at that. Pat Boone, Jackie Gleason, Kenny Rogers. Look at Kenny Rogers over here. That's very interesting. I like that, we got some more over here too. These are original from the Brown Derby itself. I love that. That's a really cool thing right there. Doris Day. Overall, the Brown Derby was delicious and it's such a great atmosphere. I feel like I liked the steak more than I liked the grilled pork. I mean, it was still good. I'm not the biggest like Cobb salad fan, so that's why I didn't get the Cobb salad, but the steak here is always a go-to. I just wanted to try something different. The, the spoon bread really caught me off guard because I thought I've had it before, but when I first took that bite, I was like, I've never had this before and I don't think I ever will again. Just not my cup of tea, it's just not my bread. I didn't like that at all. And the grapefruit cake is such a unique thing that I actually do enjoy. So it was a lot of fun. Now, we're gonna see if we can ride some rides, maybe Mickey and Minnie's. Take a look at this. Earlier, it was an 80 minute wait. And right now I can tell you there's no queue on the outside. So that means we're just going straight in and it's probably under 20 minutes. This is incredible. I don't think I've ever seen it like this before. Wow. This is so cool. It says only 35 minutes but I don't even think it's 35 minutes. Hi. Oh, thank you. Look at how fancy this is. Wow. It is a walk-on. It's a walk-on. It's a literally 100% well, walk-on. Look at this. This guy's just finishing his cake. I don't blame you. <laughs> Yeah, a total lie. 35 minutes. Not even close. And it literally, we just walked right on. The attraction like starts now. Once you get to the once you get to the touch point, that's when I figured the wait time should stop. And that was a walk on. Hi, you me? Tell them you were late for a picnic. Yep, we're off to the park. See you later. 
so far, the only thing I heard that's different on the ride than the one in Disneyland is the final scene. I think things are swapped on each side, but I don't know if there's like small Easter eggs. The ride is too new to know any different. Like it's literally the grand opening right now, just on a different coast. Oh, here comes our train. Much as I love Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, I do miss the Great Movie Ride a quite a lot. I love that ride, but it's nice to see. It's nice to see Mickey Mouse have his own ride. I think it would have been cooler if it was just only in Toontown, like over in Disneyland, and that would give me reason to go back and forth between the parks. You know what I mean? I feel like that's what they should have done with the the Tower of Terror. Just keep it the way it is. Tower of Terror here, Guardians over there, because that makes me want to go to both parks. 23 minutes left until the park closes. We're gonna try to see if we can get into Olga's or if we can get on another ride. I, I mean, tonight seems like a pretty chill night, especially since Mickey Minnie's was a walk-on, which was shocking to me. Right now, Rise of the Resistance has a 40 minute wait time. 40 minutes, it went from 140 to 40. That's incredible. I don't know how, but we're going into Olga's Canteen. We went up and they uh, are doing walk-ups right now. We just walked up and said three, and they said, sure, 10 minutes, just hang around, and we'll call your name. And I'm excited. 
because my friend uh, Julie, it's her first time actually going here. I always like doing first time things with people because they get to experience it and you try to guide them in the right direction. I just like seeing people's pure joy when they get to do something fun. So I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm super excited. They're actually taking tons of different walk-ups right now. So we're not just lucky. I mean, it's just a, this is a good night to come here. I'm kind of happy that I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt tonight. I don't know if you guys noticed my shirt. I love it. It kind of reminds me of G.I. Joe a little bit, but it is uh, the Mandalorian. And I like the color scheming. It's very fancy. Julia, you're your first timer. I know. I, I really like it. I love the metal. <laughs> I love the metal. <laughs> reservation for uh, the canteen is actually I think at 9 45 45 minutes after the park closes and it's open for like another 30 minutes so like technically you could probably still come here until like 10 o'clock at night an hour completely after the park closes oh look at and DJ Rex is actually starting to play some good tunes some Gaia she's the queen I love Gaia Look at that. The outer rim. The outer rim. On the outer rim. No, it's right there. I just said the outer rim. You drink a few more and you'll be good. Of course, Julie's first time, she has to get the fuzzy tauntaun. If you're, if you're a first timer at Oga's, you have to get the fuzzy tauntaun. Yep. Are we cheersing? Cheers! What are you doing? Amateur hour! <laughs> Julie, just take some of that and put it on your face. Or get it on your nose. Just for the video. Oh wait, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I was only kidding. It tingles. Your face is gonna go numb. <laughs> She'll see very soon. Is it really not affecting you? No, I like. I think there was a lot of radiation when I was a kid. I think I have I survived a lot. How is this possible? She literally just ate all that foam. I feel like you're laughing. No, we're not joking. The fuzzy tauntaun has a foam that's supposed to make your face tingly, and uh, I don't know. I guess it doesn't work for Julie. So, oh, oh boy. <laughs> you look crazed. I have rabies. How many times do I need to tell you back away, Nate? Back away. <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't ask for a better way to close out the night tonight than how it actually ended up. And Julie loved her drink. She didn't feel the pins and needles, like the little like tingly feeling. I feel like they toned it down a lot because I tried some too, but like I didn't feel it. Not as much as it used to. Maybe let me know in the comments if you guys have noticed that it like got toned down a lot. And now we're gonna start making our way out. It's still super early. I told you we could stay a lot later, like after the park closed, but it's only 9.31. We were actually in there pretty quick, got our drinks, and now it's time to hit the road. We're gonna start making our way home. I wanna take you guys back and show you Gracie. The night kind of got away from me. We were having fun just hanging out and uh, we couldn't get a lot done, but we did make the most of it. We got to do a lot from the little time that we were here. I got here, I would say around five o'clock-ish and we got to have dinner, got to hang out a little bit, ride Mickey and Minnie's and also go to the canteen. So I feel like that's a, a success. And now we're gonna head home and I got something really cool I wanna show you guys. I got something in the mail that I'm really excited to check out. I like ringing the doorbell because it gets Gracie to bark. <laughs> Did you hear me ringing the doorbell? What'd you think of that, huh? What'd you think of that, huh? Pretty woman walking down the street. Pretty woman, no privacy at all.
All right, Gracie is taking care of her business. Now it's time to open up the package. Scissor me. Whew. All right, here it is. Look at this. We got a new dog dish for Gracie Girl. And then we got the matching one. This is so awesome. She's gonna love that. Oh, we even got the scooper too. It's a set. Look at that. And then inside here. Oh no, I'm gonna need two hands. Oh, oh wow, look at that. We actually got another one. It's a little clip for the bags. Oh yeah, gonna need two hands for this. Look at this precious beauty. Oh, it's so incredible. Mickey's Dixieland Band. Oh, I love it. Donald Goofy. I wish it would work. I don't know if it needs batteries, but this is so incredible. What an awesome little treat. And plus all of Gracie's dog dishes. This is the whole entire Elpo collection. 101 Dalmatians. She had one of these before. Uh, she had two of them, but I lost one because it ended up... Uh, uh, on my road trip, I ended up losing a bag and it had all of her dish stuff. So now we have extras and we got the the other one. I'm so excited, but I love this phone. Look at Goofy. Look at Mickey. This is incredible. I'm going to actually get a landline just so that I can hook this up and have a phone number that people can call me. So I can see it going. That would be so cool. And with that, I think we are done here today. Thank you so much, Jennifer and Cashel. That was such a wonderful little gift you guys sent me. And I hope I get to see you soon. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. I got a fancy new hat. Look at this bad boy. I'm so happy. <laughs> Anywho's, hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.